Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to Lakewind Christian Center's midweek service. And of course, you all know my name is Pastor Derek T. Griffin, and I have with me the senior pastor, my spiritual father, the man of the hour, the man in the house, the man in the house of God right now where we're sitting. Praise God. We're in a remote location. We're not in my home. Yay! But everybody give a special love, hug, shoot, high five. Pastor Riley's in the house, y'all. All right. <laughs> yes, we love it. We love it. We love it. Give him the love. Show him the love. Our fearless leader who's brought us 23 years strong in ministry in this community, y'all. Still hanging in there, still fighting the battles, fighting the good fight of faith, keeping the lights on, Lord have mercy, keeping the doors open, keeping the water running, the plumbing is still preach, working. Boy. You better hear me. This man is keeping the air on. It's cool in here, y'all. And guess what else? We got our new projector in the house. Yeah. Good job on the fundraiser. We got our brand new projector. That bad boy is white and pure and holy up in here. But God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us today and this evening. Of course, it's always a plum pleasing pleasure to bring you Bible study, midweek service, if you will, on Wednesdays. And uh, again, thank Pastor Riley. Thank you, Pastor Kay. Uh, you all have been wonderful in allowing me to bring a message every Wednesday night. It's been such a blessing. And I, I just can't tell you how it's been a blessing to me just to get prepared for every Wednesday night with the word of God. It, it really prepares me to be the man of God that I know you all want me to be, that God has made me to be. But I'm so proud to have him here with me tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and just open with prayer so we can get started on this love fest this evening. You're going to love our topic because it is about love. Amen. So let me pray. Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us to come together once again on a wonderful Wednesday where you have blessed us to be a part of. You woke us up this morning in our right minds. And as I always say, Father, and when I pray to, for you to think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords as I minister, as we do the things, myself, my pastor tonight, that we will minister and bring good news to your sheep. Lord, don't let, let revelation knowledge flow freely. Let hearts open up to receive the subject matter that we're sharing with those that are listening in tonight, that they will understand the power of your love and our love for one another. More importantly, how we have to love, live by love, because love is the fuel of our faith. God, we thank you that you will protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, that no demonic or evil force will come and interrupt this transmission so that we can continue to do what you've ble blessed us to do. And that's to be a blessing to others. So give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And in Jesus' majestic name we pray. Amen. So, welcome. <laughs> Pastor? Hey, guys. Hey, great day. Great uh, uh, words of encouragement in order to let us know what it's all about. It's good to be on the midweek service with you tonight. I just believe that we're going to bring smoke. Uh, we're going to talk about what we believe is most important and what have kept us here on this corner for 23 years. We'll let you know a little bit around the end of it, but we believe what we're going to talk about tonight is just so hot and it's just so important that we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we kind of mix it up a little bit. I'm going to be talking about loving God, and he's going to be talking about loving and serving others. But the objective is, is for everybody to get a hold of what kept us here on this corner, love. And everybody know we are one loving kind of ministry. Even in the middle of COVID, I think we were still hugging, but we got a revelation. We start <laughs> high-fiving, you know. But all of that was good. We got some great things that are coming up on this weekend. And you know, the 23 years, we're going to be shouting for joy on next weekend. First of all, great job pulling off midweek service. Uh, we've been encouraging everybody to share, 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 because what we have is far more greater than what's just coming to our particular area. Uh, the prayer has already been laid out. I think the, the playing course is level, and we're going to talk about love. I'm going to be talking about loving God, and while I'm talking about loving God, Pastor D is going to come in, and he's going to be talking about loving one another. That's most important, and I can tell you, out of the late winners that are here, the late winners that was in this house on Sunday, the late winners that have been coming, those are the lovers of late winners from the mother's board all the way down to all the other boards in the house. We are lovers, okay? But now look at a couple of scripture that we're going to be talking about tonight. And my first one, D, is this. The believers 
respond to God's love and favor. Now, if you don't get a hold of anything, get a hold of favor. But if you notice, favor came after love. But look at what it says in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 7. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One Lord. And then in verse 5, he just said, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day, listen up, this day shall be in thine heart. You know, we talked about on Sunday about Jesus, home is in our hearts until you allow Satan to come and run him out. And these words which I command thee this night, this day, here in the studio at Lake Wayne Christian Center uh, shall be in our hearts. And here's where I'm going to cut this one loose. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by thy way, by the way, and when thou lie down, and when thou risest up. Now, you got to see what's missing here, okay? And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Now, you don't want to wait till that child is 14 years old, and because these are the ones that's raising all the sand today. Mm -hmm. You got to catch them when they're two, three years old, and teach thy word to thy children, diligently unto thy children. And I thought that was quite impressive. Mm -hmm. And I know when you're going to come up with one that's going to come back kind of close to that one, because it's all about loving God and then loving others. The Amplified put it this way, and, and, and you shall wet and sharpen them so as to make them penetrate and teach and impress them, impress them, diligently upon the minds and the hearts of your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You know, most of the kids that don't want to come to church, the love is not there. The love is not there. But I know there's one scripture over there, D, that you can pull out of there about loving others that would just fit right in right now. So go for it. Uh, part, part, of, part of the love, the love issue is... We need to understand God's love for us, first and foremost. I think that's where it all begins. I know you know that the Bible says God is love. There's Thank a you. scripture that says God is love. So love is who he is. And so if we're children of God, if we're going to abide in love, we're going to be able to give love, we have to understand that we come from love. Love created us. If God is love, then we've been created by love, thereby yeah. We have no excuse not to be able to operate in love coming from love. Isn't that amazing? But what happens is we got it twisted. But I'm going to share with you how we need to know importance, the importance of how love is from God. Because we get it confused. We think it's about our love for God. No, it's about really God's love for us. If you go to 1 John 4, 9 through 11, it really breaks it down quite simple in that regard. 1 John 4, 9 through 11 says... This is how God showed his love among us. It says he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. That we might live through God's son, Jesus. Right? Watch this. This is love. That we live through Jesus. God gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. So that we can live through him. And he says in that scripture, this is what love is, living through Jesus. Watch this. Not that we loved God, mm -hmm. but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Watch out. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So bottom line is, if God felt so compelled, that even after we were sinners, he said, look, I love y'all so much, I'm not going to hold it against you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to erase all of the wrong that Come you've on, done. God. Come on, And then I'm going to give you a perfect one, one of me, of my seed, of my, my, my loins, God's loins, his son Jesus, who's perfect. And if you live through him, you're living in love and you got everything going for you. No, no bars hold. No bars held. God is saying, get in Jesus. You got it done. A lot of folks don't understand that. See, you got to remember Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all power, mm -hmm. all of God's power. He's calling the shots right now. So if we're living in him, then we're calling, we're with the shot caller 
and we're wrapped up, tied up in the love fest between God and his son. That's beautiful. We can't lose with a relationship like that. Awesome. Awesome. Back to loving God. That was right in the middle of what God really <laughs> wants us to hear. And where are we going to go next? We're going to go to Matthew chapter 22. And then we're going to look at a couple of verses there. See, because Jesus called us, just like Pastor D was talking about, Jesus called us to love God above all else. Above all else. In other words, he's got to be at the top. Now, I know you guys have a lot of things out there that you love. But when that love go towards that thing, I'm not going to call names because you don't need to be throwing no brick at me. But all of us know sometimes there's things that we love and we put it above God and it stops us from loving God the way we love. He said, Jesus called us to love God above all else. And then he also said, he summarized the law as a matter of love. If you look at Matthew 22, 37 and 39, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. So that means that's all of us, soul, mind, heart first. You got it. And then in verse 38, he said this, he said, and this is the first and the great commandment, the very first one, and the great commandment, and, and, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I thought it was quite, quite appropriate for us to talk about, uh, uh, Pastor D.B. talking about loving one another and uh, loving God, you know. And I mean, we, Pastor K and I do the best we can to keep the love in our house. But I'm going to tell you sometimes, Satan will creep up in there, you know. But it's good that there's another room that I know about. I'll go in that room and she'll go in the other room. Then all of a sudden we recognize that, hey, we are supposed to love the Lord thy God with all of our hearts and with all of our soul and with all of our mind. When your heart is full of love for God, you know Satan is going to try to take it out of there. But it's our job is to make sure that if Jesus is going to live in our heart, then Satan doesn't have any power to get up in there. And I want to thank our, our coordinator tonight. Lady Lisa came in and pressed us on. The camera was too far away. So, I mean, we're shooting real well tonight. Loving God is what we're talking about and loving one another. I know you got a good one, D, to come up on that one. Right. He, he, here's the thing. I think we get it, you know, it's easy to love God because we understand that God's been there for us in all of our lives, our whole creation from birth to where we are today. And he'll be there with us when we transition into the spiritual aspect of our lives, our eternity, right? But I think the issue right now, as we see in the world, is we have issues with loving one another. Um, especially within certain cultures and certain nationalities, there's a hatred of self. Uh, there's a hatred of your neighbor. There's a lot of hate going on. There's a lot of hate and, and division, uh, racism. It's, being, it's been perpetuated greatly through the media and so forth. But that's why God says, you got to love, you got to love. But watch this. He's not just telling you. He says, we need to love one another. Watch this deeply. Mm -hmm. See, we've got some shallow love going on. I only love you when I see you. Like on Sunday is when I love you, but when I'm at home, I'm talking about you. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm just going to show you that we got some shallow love going on in our households, in our families, even in our churches. God says you got to love deeply. When you love somebody deeply, that means like my wife loves my dirty drawers. I'm just going to keep it keep. I'm going to keep it real. All right now, my wife loves me. She the, the dirty drawers. She washes them like it ain't no big deal. You feel me? That's some love right there. You heard uh, but, that? but let me let me share something with you now. Watch this. Go to first. Go to 1 John 4 and 21. I'm going to give that to you. It says, he has given us this command. Okay. God has given us a command. Watch this. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. So if you claim you love God, he says it's a commandment. You got to be obedient. When he commands something, that means you need to obey this. Because then you obey the love of another it's going to open up blessings like you've never seen before. Watch this. Go to 1 Peter 1 and 22 about okay. the deepness of love. i got to show you why he said deeply. It's, I'm not just making that up. 1 Peter 1 and 22 says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, which I just gave you, mm. by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply, he said, from the heart. It's right there. Mm. And that's where we're missing it in the body of Christ. That's where we're missing it in our community for our neighbors, our neighbors, not just family, 
but our friends. We've got love issues in the house, mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. We got woman, husband against wives, killing each other, children, killing babies. I saw a news report last night, blew my mind about a little infant, maybe four weeks, a couple, black couple, the, the al alcohol poison. They were giving alcohol to the baby. Oh, my God. That's not love, y'all. No, it's not. We got to love. But go mm -hmm. ahead, Pastor. Yeah, and then because he said the two loves that we discussed or before Pastor D came in, he said that the second one is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So that lets you know the importance of love. Okay, but look at what he says here. See, Christ's love for us must compel us to love and serve him. Knowing that he died for us is how much proof you need in order to love a person. This person died for us. But it says here, Christ's love, his love for us must compel us. When you find out what he really did, showing an act of love, it will compel us to love and serve him. Because see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 and 15, look at what it says. It says, Christ's love compel us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that died that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So he's only talking about Jesus Christ. And here at this church, I mean, we never get too far away from love. But we wanted to make sure that we brought it together tonight for you to just get your hearts all open again. Because without that love for God, you don't even have the love properly for yourself. Mm -mm. That's the way it works. Timmy, I know you got one come back, that one up there, D. Well, you got this. I'm going to stick with this deep thing because I want you all to get this deep love thing. I love my family deeply. I, I really do. What does that mean? That means that whenever they make me angry, whenever they do something that disturbs me, I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay. I'm quick to forgive, soon to forget, and keep it moving by keep continuing to be the father and the husband that I need to be. I, I don't allow mistakes to taint the fact that I love you in spite of the mistakes. I don't make the mistake of not what? Putting myself in a humble position so that they may rise. I don't make the mistake in not understanding the importance of sacrifice, my happiness for someone else's happiness. That's love when I'm thinking about someone above me. But watch what God says about that. First Peter 4 and 8. He says, above all. Okay. I'll say it again. God said in 1 Peter 4 and 8, above all. Mm. Watch this. Love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Mm. So when someone sins against you, maybe they didn't meet an expectation. You had an expectation of them to say they made a promise and didn't keep it. You don't all of a sudden just got to hate that person and throw them out and be like, I don't want to deal with them anymore. Granted, you can still love them from afar if you know it. But in life, when God is in your heart, he'll teach you to forgive because forgiveness is divine. That's a supernatural spiritual power when you're operating in forgiveness because God forgave us. So you're operating God-like in forgiveness, which opens up for the love deeply component to operate and work to cover up the sin that you've done. Because your love for someone else can cover up a sin you've done against somebody. Because none of us are perfect. None. None. I'll leave you with that. Absolutely none. <laughs> awesome. Look at what it says here. Okay? In, in, in other words, get a revelation of none of us being perfect. So in other words, we should feed ourselves scriptures in order to make sure the love stay in our hearts. But it says here, he said, hold fast to the Lord. To the who? To the Lord. Hold fast. Don't go to the church looking for the pastor. Go there looking for the love of God. But he said, hold fast to the Lord and out of, out of love, keep his commandment. Okay, out of love, you keep his commandment. Don't try to hold on to the commandment and there's no love. Now, let's back that up with the scripture. In Joshua 22 and 5, I want to make sure I read both, the Amplified as well as the King James. 22 and 5, this is what he said. He said, but take diligent heed to do the commandments. Okay, we have, as a matter of fact, we're looking at them right here in, in the studio. 
Okay, he said, take diligently heed to do the commandments and the law. Now, you remember, he said to do the commandments and the law. Okay, so don't do nine of them and, and t tell God you love him. You got to do all ten of them. I don't need to go through them. All of us already know them. He said, uh, uh, the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways. Not my ways or the Pastor D ways or Pastor Riley ways or Pastor K. Or Lady Lisa. It doesn't matter. He said, my ways, in his ways, okay? And to keep his commandment and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. The Amplified tears it up. The Amplified said, be but take diligently heed to do commandments, do the commandments, and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you. Okay? Moses wasn't there for us, but his word came to us. And it said, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all of his ways and to keep his commandments and to cling to and unite him and unite with him and to serve him with all your hearts and with all your soul and your very life. Can't get any deeper than that. Hmm. Cannot get any deeper than that. I know you got one for that. Well, speaking of serving, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, at the end of the day, love compels us as believers to be in a position and be prepared to serve others, right? Yes, it will. I mean, even Jesus, even though he was King Jesus, he came off his throne in heaven and came down and operated as a servant towards us. He washed others' feet. He served them in a lot of ways, his disciples. He covered them with love. He covered them with sacrificing his, his deity to be common like us. I mean, that's amazing when you know you can stop a legion of angels with one command, but yet and still you don't even do it and allow in humility for man to just do whatever. That's love, man. Mm. I, it reminds me of the song that we used to sing, you know, that's love. That's love. Mm -hmm. Hung, you know, it's hung, spread and wide. Come on, y'all. Three days later, come on. Powerful, powerful. But watch this. This is what's amazing. What's amazing is that love is absolutely essential as Christians, as believers. It's essential. And one who has no love is nothing without it. If we don't have love, we're nothing. We're nothing to God. We're nothing to other people. We can't serve folks without having a loving heart. If you go and see what Paul says in 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. he describes and gives us a definition of what love really is. God gave him a revelation to share with us in his writings. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 says this. Watch this and pay close attention because we hear this scripture in weddings and everywhere else, but do we really pay attention to understand that this is descriptive from the heart of God as to how we know when someone's operating in love? Number one, love is patient. Mm -hmm. Love is patient. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Love is kind. All the time. Not mean-spirited. Not hurtful. Okay? Watch this. It does not envy. Mm -mm. If you love someone, you want to be happy for them when they succeed. Be happy for them when, when they're blessed. God say, be, cheer be, be cheerful when someone's having a good time. Be having a good When someone's mourning, mourn. You, you, you move, love moves you where others move. You reflect and you understand where they are and you respect that. You don't envy it, right? It does not boast. It's not bragging, braggadocious. It doesn't put itself out there like it's better than somebody else. That's not love. It is not proud. There's no pride. Pride comes before the fall. Mm -hmm. Love gets us and moves us up for promotion in God's kingdom. It is not rude does not disrespect others openly or not. It is not self-seeking. Too many of us want to put ourselves before others and call that love. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the definition in the scriptures, I have to be concerned about others before I'm concerned about me. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have a me first mentality and that's not the way God told us to love. Watch this. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record. Thank it you. keeps no record of wrongs. No matter how many times somebody has done you wrong, love says, ah, let it go. 
Some people are still hurting because of the five dollars that the, the neighbor took from them and never paid them back. The five dollars. Some folks still hot over five dollars they didn't get paid back. <laughs> My God. Six, but Woo, five. Okay. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. You can't be excited about evil things that are going on in your life and the world that needs to turn you off quickly. But you do get excited when you hear the truth of God's word. It gets you excited, gets you motivated, you get inspired, you're ready to go out here and serve. Mm. It always protects. How about that? Always trust. How about that? Always hopes. Watch out. Always perseveres. Always overcomes. Come on now. That's mm -hmm. God's definition of love. If you're experiencing this, if you're acting out on that, if you're living in that, guess what I can tell you? You're blessed and highly favored. I know there's so much favor going on in your life because oh you've God. tapped into this love fest that God put down here for us. It covers up your sins. It opens up the heavens where God can pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive because you got revelation on not how to have a hard heart, unforgiving heart, and learn to not to hold on to wrongs or put yourself before others just because you feel some kind of way. Get out of your feelings and get in love's gra God's grace. I'm telling you. God is awesome. I'm telling you. He tells us to walk in all of his ways. Did I say all the half? All. He said all of his ways to obey his commandment, to hold fast to him and in serve and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at here. This is what I ran into right here. To love Jesus is to obey his teaching. Hmm. Remember we always talk about here? We don't have a sermon now as we have a scripture. Uh, I had to speak at, at a seven last word on, uh, on, on Friday night. Okay. And when I went up to teach about what I said, it just blew right out of me. Pascal had to tell me that it came out of me. Uh, because everybody that was for me, they were just hollering at them. I mean, they were hollering, you know, and, and hollering, and it came right out, and God said, stop hollering at me, you know, and I didn't even know it was came out like that, but it said, stop hollering at me. In other words, I know we've talked about it time and time again, but look at what it says here. To love Jesus is to obey his teaching. Mm -hmm. Now, you know this. Let not your heart be troubled. That's John 14. That's where you start, John 14. But I want to drop down to verse 23. In verse 23, Jesus answered and he said unto him, If a man love me, automatically incorporate woman. Right, D? Yes. Okay. He will keep my words. Hmm. Okay. He will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. <laughs> Hop, ho, shake, ho, ho. Okay, and then in verse 24, he said, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. So you can, you can see immediately by watching the news who love Jesus and who does not love him. But he said, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. And the word which he hears is not mine. God is not telling nobody to go kill and shoot up the places and shoot 10 people and all this stuff. The words that he hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. In other words, he's telling us that these words that we are hearing of him is from the Father who sent him. So now it's coming from the throne, ladies and gentlemen. So providing we walk in these things, we can sure enough get the blessing. We'll be here 23 more years. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know you got a good one after that. One. <laughs> yes, so real. Well, I want to. I want to. I want to give give Jesus the glory here because yes. at the end of the day, um, you know, <clears throat> I always hear he leads from the front. He's a leader. He is the example of which by which we should follow. Period. Jesus Christ already set the stage on how our attitude, our spirit, our behavior. All of these different things, he's displayed them. We have no excuse because if you read the word, you know the gospels. We've we've seen the movies. We've heard and we've been preached about how Jesus was. I'm going to show you how he said, I'm the example that you need to follow. And that's what I'm saying. We got. That's why it says idolatry is evil. It's a sin. 
because it's taking you away from the, the prime example of who God wants us to follow and be like. Be like Christ, right? Be Christ-like. In other words, have the mind of Christ, think like him, which means I love and I serve, okay? And then I'm going to put others above me. And the only way you can do that, I, I realize this from God in heaven. I recognize that when I behave in that manner, then I'm behaving like my father in heaven. Because think about this. God is God. He's sovereign. But he, 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 he did this now. Watch this. He gave his only begotten son and allowed man to kill him. How many of you could do something like that? Mm -hmm. His son that he loved deeply. But guess who he did it for? Not for himself. He did it for the many, for us. Mm. That's the example of the love that you are willing to die for. Jesus was willing to die for us, and he didn't have to. Watch this. Jesus commands us to love others in the manner in which he loved the disciples. Mm. Watch this. Go to Matthew 16 and 24. Okay. Matter of fact, take that back. I want to do this one first. John 13, 14 and 15. Watch this. John 13, 14 and 15. Watch this. It says, now that I, your Lord and teacher, this is Jesus talking. It's in the red. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Mm -hmm. I have set you an example. Ha. <laughs> that you should do as I have done for you. He says, I give you the example of how you need to serve, how you need to be there for someone else, irregardless of who you think you are. If you think you're somebody, it doesn't matter because Jesus was somebody and is somebody. He's our Lord. He said, I'm your Lord and I'm your teacher, but look what I did. Even if I, if you see me as above you, I still found myself, what? Serving you. So as leaders, we need to learn to serve in this kingdom, God's kingdom. It's not about them washing my feet, mm -hmm. but me washing your feet. In other words, not necessarily physically, because I know we got some bad feet out there. Trust me, you don't want nobody mm -hmm. touching them. I get that. Mm -hmm. But I get the symbolism. I get the analogy in terms of whatever your needs are. I got to make sure as the heart of God is in me to meet those needs. Comes first. Amen. Because that's what Jesus did. He met needs, man. He met our needs. He's there for us to get us through when we're going through it, to get us to the other side. He's not talking about you figure it out yourself. You're on your own. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. That's not Christ-like. Jesus said, I'll get it done for you. I'm your Lord. I'm your, I'm your teacher and your Savior. Mm -hmm. But I got you. <laughs> These words you hear are not of my own. But my Father, God, who sent me. That's precious. In other words, he was bowing, even when he was headed to the cross, he was still bowing and honoring his Father who sent him. Now Solomon tells us here uh, to respond to God's favor by serving him from the heart. Now, it, when, I, when I saw that, it kind of let me know that Solomon generated his wealth because there was a special type of love for God. And he tells us to respond to God's favor, okay, by serving him. We shouldn't have to ever look for anybody to serve in this ministry. Not ever, okay? But we're doing it because we love God. Now look at what he says in 1 King chapter 8, and let's look at verse uh, 56. we read a couple of verses here. In verse 56, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people. Now this is back in the Old Testament. According to all that he promised, okay, all that he promised. He don't give promise like man and, and in a half of them, okay. He said all that he promised, that there hath no failure one word of all his good promises, okay, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Verse 57, the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. Now, it's telling me that we can let him leave us and we can forsake him. But he said, let him not leave us nor forsake us. Verse 58, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in half of his ways, Pastor D, all of his ways, and to keep his commandment and his statute and his judgment 
which he command our fathers. And let these words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times. These folks had a real reason to be calling on God and loving him in a special way as, <clears throat> as the matter shall require. Verse 60, that all the people of the earth, that automatically incorporates us, that all the people of the earth, are you of the earth? You out there, are you of the earth? He said that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else like him. Last scripture. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statue and to keep his commandments as it is this day. Did he say keep nine of the commandments? Did he say eight? He said keep the commandments with the S as of this day. Oh, my God. Are we on to something tonight? Mm -hmm. Loving God is precious. Mm -hmm. I know there's a good one over there to back that one up. Well, you know, I'm going to always bring to the fact that on my side of the equation here that we set up for our teaching tonight, mm -hmm. I want to show how we got to have this love for each other, right? Yes. He's got the love of God, but we got to get this love thing for one another, right? That's this, is, this is where we're messing it up and we're mm -hmm. not really consistent. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it's it's not by happenstance that this is an issue in our society. What we got going on is a world system that promotes individuals to be self-centered. It's a system that idolizes American Idol. You know, you got all these different things that talk about being the best, mm -hmm. being the only one, the one at the top, number one. It not it never really talks about a a a multitude of folks all having the same, where none suffers lack. You know, we have these divisions in terms of demographics. You have the upper class, middle class, lower class. That's not heavenly. That's not godly. That's not God's kingdom. God has enough resources where all of us can walk on streets of gold and live in mansions and have all of what it is that he wants us to have because it's all his. He's not negating anything from being in abundance towards his children. We have short mindedness in the kingdom because of self-centeredness. See, when we get greedy, that means we're self-centered, when we mm -hmm. want more than someone else. Mm -hmm. When we operate in the simple fact that I have to have a better house, a better car, and not help someone else get a better house, better car, you're now not operating under kingdom principles. You're operating under worldly principles. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you scripturally where that self-centeredness is not what God is promoting in his kingdom or in his spirit or in the character of his children. If we look at it, it says, don't be self-centered, but look out for others. In this, we have to imitate Jesus. Watch. Go to Philippians 2, 3 through 5. Philippians 2, 3 through 5. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, watch this, consider others better than yourself. That's a hard thing for folks to do. Let me tell you something. <laughs> That's hard. God knows, but if you can do it with the love of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the new creature in Christ that you are, it's not hard. It's absolutely easy when God says, my burden is light. What I'm asking you all to do is not heavy. It ain't heavy. Because once you tap in and start operating in that spirit, God starts to show a whole abundance of favor in your life. I'm telling you, I'm living it. I understand it. I got that thing. And I'm telling you, it's okay to help other people because it just bring, you reap what you sow. You help, you're going to get help. You give, you're going to get. It's real. God created the universal matrix that self-centered people. It says pride comes before what? The fall. Come on now. It's all in the word. So guess what? Get your mind right and start understanding that serving others is a good thing, not a bad thing. Time. Bringing yourself off the throne and letting Christ sit where he needs to be on that throne is a great thing because guess what? If he's up there, you up there with him. It's an easy thing to do. So if you listen to that scripture, it says each of you should look only to your own interest, but also, watch, not only to your own interest. We should not look only to our own interest, meaning you can look for taking care of yourself, but think about others at the same time. Because if I go up, some folks need to come up with me. We know a lot of ministries. Help folks get up to the top. Mm -hmm. They got to the top. 
through the ladder down. Ain't nobody else coming back up there with him. None. But we got to fix that. It's a different day, different hour, different spirit, God's spirit that's operating now. So when I go up, folks got to come up with me. We all got to get to the top because God will then what? Back it, anoint it, because we're obeying his scriptures and doing what the word of God says. Mm, 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 mm. You know, we talked about on the last scripture about what Solomon uh, tells us to respond to God's favor by serving him from the heart. Well, now David came back. And David charged his son Solomon to serve God with wholehearted, okay, devotion, okay, is good for all of us. Wholehearted devotion is good for all of us. Now, let me give you a strictly reference to this. Let's go to First Chronicle. Okay, I'll go there with you. In First Chronicle, if you look at it, First Chronicle, what he's telling us here, First Chronicle chapter 28. And we're going to look at one verse here, or maybe a couple of verses. One verse. Verse 9, 28 and 9. Look at what it says. Okay? I'm going to read it in, out, out, of, out of this King James Version, and then I'm going to read the Amplified Version. First Chronicle 2089, he said, you, this is David. David charged, charged to his son Solomon. He said, you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father. And serve him wholeheartedly, devotion, and with a willing mind. Here we go, with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart. The Lord searches every heart and understanding, every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Now, I got to see that in the King James, in the Amplified forever okay he said and you solomon my son know that god your father have personally knowledge of him be acquainted with him and understand him appreciate heed and cherish him and serve him with blameless heart and a willing mind for the lord searches all hearts the lord searches all hearts and mind and understanding all the wandering of the thoughts if you seek him inquiring for and of him and re recoil in him as your first and vital necessity, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Mm. This is real talk. Mm. Cast you off for tomorrow, mm. forever. Mm. That's what mm. it says. Lord, have mercy. Ooh. I hope y'all getting this. I oh tell you, this, this is real, real talk as uh, Darren would tell. This is real talk right there. Brother Darren, this is real talk right here. Praise yes, God. Indeed. I got something else that'll tip of your fancy as well. I'm being sarcastic, but here's the deal. Um, I've got something here, once again, that's uh, polar opposites of what the world says how we should behave when it comes to being great, uh, being awesome, being successful. You know, the world system has a formula for that. And it is not the same formula as what the kingdom of God says for us to be great. See, this is where we have to be taught so that we can operate in divinity, in supernatural power. God knows who to promote. He promotes those who get this. Watch this. Go to Matthew 20, 26 through 28. Watch this. He says, whoever wants to become great among you must, must, must be your servant. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And whoever wants to be first <laughs> must be your slave. Oh, shucks. I don't know that folks don't like that word. It says, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. He didn't come to be served. Jesus didn't come here to be served. He didn't have a whole bunch of folks bound down to him and lay low and, and walking and doing all this kind of stuff that we see the world positioning folks in that type of situation. Caesar and all of them did all of that right in Rome. Jesus came and he was serving folks. Watch this. The scripture says, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So his goal, his mindset, his purpose was not for him to glorify himself. We give him the glory because of what he's done for the many. He had many on his mind, not just him. 
not just one. He said, I do as the Father has told me to do. I follow the guidelines of the, the master architect, my daddy. I am obedient to the, to the cross for the many. Come on. How many of you have that kind of mindset? How many of us can really say that I am obedient to God's word to where if it hurts me so somebody else can get more? Can you really do that? Can you really make that kind of sacrifice? I suffice to say, yes, you can. Because you know in the end you're going to win. Because God blesses those who are in Christ that behave and have the mind of Christ. Because Christ, when he died, God brought him back three days later and said, that's my man. You have that same authority coming to you. You have that same relationship with God. We will rise as well because we did it the way God told us to do it. That's the ultimate goal at the end of the day, putting others before ourselves. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A couple more before we close out for tonight. But it says here, motivated by love. Now, we're sharing this because we're getting ready to enter into another 23 years. I know it's going to be 24 first, but I'm believing that late wind can go on and on and on and on. But love is going to have to be the foundation. We came here talking and preaching love, and we're going to stay here doing the same thing. In other words, all of us need to become motivated by love, okay? You watch what happening up here, happen, uh, watch what happens up in this church on Sunday. You're going to see love because this is what we're talking about. We believe in, if, even if they don't hear it, uh, the angel is going to take it to him some kind of way. But being motivated by love, reject pardon and all sinful pleasures. Instead, put on Christ. In Romans 13 and 13, look at what he says here. He said, a night is far spent. Okay? Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chamberlain and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Pastor D was just talking about it. Not in strife and envying. He said in verse 14, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. Are you listening to me? To fulfill the lust thereof. Man, Amplified said, but close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provision for indulging the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil craving of your physical nature mm -hmm. to gratify it mm -hmm. desires lust. Mm -hmm. He's telling you right here. Oh my God. D, I know you got one to back that one up. I'm going yeah. I'm to I'm I'm close it out with these three on my side. I got three three major things I want to bring to, to the forefront. One more. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I got to get these out. Now, again, I'm talking about sacrificing for others, serving others, doing the things that God talked about, loving one another means to serve one another. So that means sometimes you got to put yourself on the lowest level, right? On the lowest on the totem pole, as they would say in the world, right? But in the world, they laugh at folks who are in that position, those who are servants. They look down on them. God looks greatly on them, and here's why. Let's go to don't become weary in doing good. Watch this. If you go to Galatians 6 and 9, it says, let us not become weary in doing good. It's a good thing to serve others. It's a good thing to love deeply your brothers in the, in, the, in the body and in the world. It's good. God said it's a good thing. Even when they don't deserve to be loved, you love them anyway, right? You forgave them anyway when they did you wrong. You still move forward and you bless them. He says, love your enemy. You learn to love them in the right way without putting yourself in harm's way, mentally, psychologically, whatever the case may be. But God knows your heart. He knows you're doing it according to his word. But it says in Galatians, right? It says, let us not become weary in doing good. Why? Watch this. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up in behaving in that manner. God has a reward for those of us who captured this knowledge, this revelation, that being a servant of each other, loving each other, you're going to reap a harvest. Let's go to the next one. Do good to all, especially to members of God's family. Watch, Watch God. this. Galatians 6 and 10. It says, as we have opportunity, because God's going to give you an opportunity to show that you've learned this, to show yourself approved. You're going to have a moment in time where you're going to have to exercise this scripture right here. 
It says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially, God said, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Don't come up in the church and take advantage of God's people, doing bad business with God's people, selling them stuff that ain't good, and then don't want to give them their money back, treating each other like we're just just weak and, and taking advantage of God's people. Everybody want to come up in the church and rape us and take what we got so they can get up out of here and do what they want to do. That ain't God-like. Stop it. You got a serious harvest coming to you, my brothers and sisters, when you behave that way. Because God said, especially love and do good amongst those who are believers. We got to learn how to treat each other right so we can get it right with God. Last one. <laughs> Follow the golden rule. Matthew 7 and 12. In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Huh, you hear that? For this sums up the law. <laughs> Come on. And the prophets. God said, look, real simple. You want good in your life? Put good in somebody else's life. You want love in your life? Love somebody else. You hear me? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you want a fight, <laughs> you know what to do. He said, you want friends? What did he say? Be friendly. Come on. It's real simple. I recognized in my closing that the way God created the universe, it responds immediately to what we put out to it. That's why he said, watch what you say, because you're speaking into a system of God that will take your word and bring it right back to you. That's why our confession should be our profession so that we learn to confess what God says, not what the world says. Because God wants you to get back what he says to come back to you. Learn this thing. Because he said, I designed it to do that. You can't get away from it. You reap what you sow. God is not mocked. Why? Because he designed it to work that way. And he is not turning his system backwards. It's going to always be what it is, what it is. God bless you all. Thank you now, for listening. They are... They the last one here, and then I want to share a little bit about what's coming up on Sunday and the next Sunday before you do about your tithes and offering. It says here, God's love for us should move us to strive for purity. Okay? The scripture reference to that one, based on this love teaching tonight, and prayerfully everybody will get a revelation of the scriptures that we share. It's not so much about Pastor D or Pastor Riley. It's about what God says. It says here, Second Corinthians 7 and 1, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of the reverence for God. What a powerful teaching tonight, even if nobody else see it. What a powerful teaching tonight it was. And I'm so glad that we decided to pull this love just before anniversary. I want to share with everybody, don't just share tonight on the broadcast. Share on your media system, your Facebook or your Footbook or your Elbow Book, and let them know we're going to be celebrating starting this weekend. This is anniversary week. And then this weekend, we have our minister case on, and that's going to be here with us this weekend. And prayerfully, some of the DIA family will come and join in on this uh, weekend. We're going to uh, praise God like we always do. And then along with that, next week is when our 23rd. Now, why we chose love tonight? Because that's what it's going to take to take us on with God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Look at all the love, Pastor. You see all the hearts come yeah, up there? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot them up again. Shoot them up again, he said. Shoot them up again. Shoot we them need to see some love. Some love. God Let bless you. There they go. Look at it. They got the message. They said, we got the message. Somebody We got us. the message. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep it real, dude. So Jesus, I'm going to keep it real. Blow the phone up. Look at that. Somebody heard us. I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth, my mom would say. Yeah. You better tell the truth, boy. Yeah. But here it is. I want to say, hey, this is an invitation to salvation. For those of you who, who want to get born again, that's watching this broadcast, we, we, we certainly want to help you to do so. And according to the scriptures, if you just listen to me according to the word in Romans 10 is 9, and if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that he died, and that he rose again, then you believe this, you receive this, that you will be saved. 
And that's a simple thing. Uh, we need to understand that God wants us to be able to confess in the presence of others that he is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my life, that I give all of me to him and that I accept him as the Lord and Savior, meaning that his words I will follow, his example I will be, and I will represent the kingdom with all of my heart and all of my soul. Also, this is our giving time. We love when we have an opportunity to give our tithes and offerings. We certainly want to encourage you all to continue to do so as you've been doing in the past. We thank those of you who have been making contributions consistently. May God give you a hundredfold in return. We know that he will because his word says so. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand those scriptures that, you know, hey, when you give, what does he say? Good measure, he'll give back. Press down, huh? Shaking together, running over. Running Watch over. what he said. He said, men shall give into your bosom. Do you know we had men to help us fund the senior living? Do you know we had men that gave us money to build the school? Do you know we have men that are bringing us more money to expand our vision for God in this community? That we have favor with folks. Man is coming to us because of our giving hearts at Lakewind Christian Center. We do exactly what God tells us to do in our tithes and offerings. Continue to do so and let God bless you like he said he would. He keeps his promises, but do you keep your faith? That's the key. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Join us Sunday for our special guest speaker, my cousin, Minister Craig Kaysan. He's going to bring a good word. I know he is. Uh, and then also we're going to show love as well. We look forward to loving on each other. But God bless you. Good night. And we'll see you next Wednesday as well. See you in the magazine. Bye-bye.